These events are directly related to the profound effect that the Nemesis system is having with the Earth's magnetic field, the magnetosphere that surrounds a planet. There is a turbulent circulation of immense electromagnetism and intense radiation that is being generated on a scale that can only be measured in astronomical terms. We know that the Nibiru object, which is the outermost planet in the Nemesis system, has been disturbing the Earth and the rest of the solar system for some time. It's evident in the changes that are happening. The waves of cosmic energy that Nibiru generates has gradually increased over time, flooding the Earth's magnetic field to the point where both the Sun and this system's magnetic field are directly opposing one another, where there are reverse polarities, in which Nibiru is spinning in a clockwise fashion as opposed to the Sun's counterclockwise rotation. So, if you were to picture a cyclone, for instance, as shown here, you may be able to visualize Nibiru's clockwise rotating magnetic field. Nibiru's strongest magnetic winds are on its right-hand side, but since Nibiru is approaching the Earth from the left-hand side of the Sun, from our perspective, then the Earth will be encountering the strongest magnetic influence from planet X, because we will be situated on the right-hand side of its core as it approaches the Earth. In addition to its magnetic influence on our planet, it will also slow down Earth's counterclockwise orbit around the Sun. This effect is already being felt as our seasons are becoming noticeably different in their duration. So the Earth will be hit by the strong right-hand side, which is the pushing side trying to pull us in the opposite direction of our natural rotation, while at the same time our Sun's opposing magnetism will largely prevent that from occurring. So the overall effect of the magnetic push is to slow us down more and more as the object gets closer. The whole purpose of displaying this computer-generated model is to show how this system, which includes a binary sun and six orbiting bodies that we know of, rotating clockwise around our sun in a direction just opposite of our own system. So as Nibiru emerges from behind the sun, its magnetic influence and its cosmic energy begins the process of affecting the Earth's magnetic shield which in turn affects the magnetic core of the Earth, resulting in increased seismic and volcanic activity and extreme increased changes in our climate, resulting in chaotic weather-related events. The question that seems to have the scientific world perplexed is whether the Earth is entering a series of cataclysmic events. Here is something that each of you must know as we present some of the disastrous events that are now happening around the world. Since 1990, natural disasters have consistently increased and have affected more than 500 million people every year, and the numbers continue to increase. These statistics would fall into the category of apocalyptic. This is where things get a bit interesting. If you factor in the overall average of geological disasters in that time frame, then the numbers have remained fairly constant. If we then look at the number of climate-related disasters, you will see that the numbers have dramatically increased. When we refer to Earth changes, it is the belief that the world will enter into a series of cataclysmic events that will cause major alterations with respect to the way in which humans uh, will live and interact on this planet. Earth changes encompass a broad spectrum that often appears mind-boggling. They include everything that is shown here in addition to other amazing and frightening phenomena. But they also include social, economical, and political systems which can create uh, their own type of upheaval 
upon civilization. Here then are some of the most amazing events happening around the world that can be referred to as apocalyptic because of their potential to create catastrophic changes to our planet and to the civilized world. Flooding is having a profound effect on the world. Historic floods are wreaking havoc on the heartland of America as well as in Canada. The effects are absolutely devastating. This is how bad it has got. It used to swell. Now 27 feet above flood stage, it's damaged nearly 200 homes. Rivers, creeks, and streams all above flood level from parts of Missouri, Arkansas, and Louisiana. The levees that protect the city have been breached. All of that water is flowing into towns like Pocahontas. Watch as this cabin slams right into a bridge. So we got like major emergency flash flooding in five states. I think it, we got rivers 10 feet past record levels and climbing. And because it is happening in rice, cake, and corn states like Missouri, Arkansas, Indiana, Oklahoma, Illinois, Louisiana, it ain't getting no press and not many people care. A lot of people don't know. Some of these places in the flood zones, we're starting to see levee reaches, numerous ones we had yesterday. They're looking at 10 plus inches of rain over the past seven days. Over 100 river gauges have flooded along the Mississippi, Missouri, and Arkansas rivers. A furious hailstorm engulfed the Denver metro area on May 8th, filling the streets with hail the size of golf balls within minutes. As of May 9th, 37 volcanoes are currently erupting around the world. The Sabancaya volcano, located in Peru, has been registering 41 explosions on a daily average. Seismicity related to the movements of internal fluids and the ascent of magma is also measured in the volcano. During the last eruption, a plume of ash reached 3,500 meters above the crater. On May 8th, a magnitude 6.4 earthquake, followed by a magnitude 5.2, hit near Tanaga Volcano in the Aleutian Island chain of Alaska. Unrest continues in this region with more than 33 earthquakes, nine of which have registered between 4.5 and 5.0. The volcano has not erupted since 1929. A short distance away near Adak Island, a swarm of earthquakes were felt registering between 5.4 and 5.7. So something is happening in this remote volcanic area of the Aleutian Islands. We are nearly two months into the spring season, but you might have a hard time convincing the residents of San Diego County. A system reminiscent of a winter storm brought heavy snow to the mountains and valleys, breaking numerous weather records across the region. Is Antarctica melting more than previously thought? Apparently so, as scientists have discovered that water is gushing across the continent more than was ever realized. The researchers have found significant drainage of meltwater flowing across the continent's ice sheets during summer in Antarctica. Until now, these streams of water were mainly associated only with Antarctica's far north regions. Seen from an aircraft, a 400 foot wide waterfall drains off of the Nansen ice shelf into the ocean. The discovery of widespread streams across the continent is ominous news, indicating Antarctica's ice may be much more vulnerable to melting than scientists predicted. Free-flowing water, which absorbs solar energy more than ice, puts nearby ice at greater risk of melting. There is increasing consensus that the power grids of the world 
are breaking down, due in large part to a weakening magnetosphere and plasma electrification. The government explanation for the uh, destabilized grids and satellite disruptions is directed towards hackers and planned exercises, thus keeping the media from identifying the actual cause, which falls squarely on abnormal solar activity leading to a collapsing magnetosphere and a weakened magnetic field. During a recent geomagnetic storm, a never-before-witnessed auroral display was photographed. This was a plasma filament. When mentioning plasma filament, it goes straight to the legends of dragons in the sky and gods in the heavens. If you cross two of these streams, then incredibly a dragon would appear, as shown in this amazing charged sky. The real reason for increasing power outages is the breakdown of our protective shield, and from this point forward it will intensify as we witness more power outages as the magnetic shield continues to collapse. Earlier in this video I mentioned how social, economical, and political systems can play a major role in the changes that happen to our planet. Whether for the betterment of a civilization or for self-serving purposes, these developments can have a profound effect on the future of our planet. A perfect example of what I am referring to involves the government's irresponsible intention of drilling in our national parks. At this moment there are 42 parks at risk. It is no secret that oil and gas companies are looking for new places to drill. But if the regulations that protect these parks from exploitation is overturned by those in Washington, then some of America's most pristine and ecologically sensitive areas will be at risk of oil spills, ground contamination, and explosions. This is a map of the 30 national parks where drilling could happen next. Any new drilling for oil and gas involves the disruption of habitats and the polluting of what little of America's untouched wilderness is left. This is but one example of how our interference with nature is contributing to the destabilization of the earth, the depletion of life's resources, and the eventual collapse of human civilization. There is something that is raising alarm bells with the world scientists, and that has to do with the massive cracks that are developing among the Earth's ice caps and glaciers. I have spoken extensively on this disturbing story, but there is now a new and gigantic unusual crack in one of the biggest glaciers located in Greenland, which could contribute to a dramatic break in the near future. Satellite images of the Peterman Glacier show an unexpected crack in its floating ice shelf. The Peterman Glacier is one of the most important outlets by which the Greenland ice sheet extends and flows into the sea. These changes are terrifying as Peterman Glacier holds back about a foot of potential sea level rise from the Greenland ice sheet. According to researchers, the ice shelf is slowly but surely falling apart. It has been stable for over 100 years, then started to break up, especially in the years from 2010 to 2012, and much faster between 2014 and 2015. Here is a time-lapse video of the changes taking place on the Peterman Glacier between 1984 and 2016.
Researchers have stated that it is unusual to see cracks forming from the center. They usually start from the sides. This could indicate that the ice shelf has gotten too thin in the middle, thus placing greater stress on the ice shelf. It is very possible that the summer of 2017 could result in dramatic changes happening at the Peterman Glacier. Since the start of this year, the United States has been witness to one severe weather outbreak after another. There have been nearly 5,400 reports of extreme weather events across the nation since April the 8th. Now, that's not taking into account additional events that have been reported uh, since that time. This is more than double the average of nearly 2,300 for the same period of time during the past decade. The animation shown here indicates how the occurrences of wind damage, large hail, and tornadoes have piled up month by month so far this year. Weather disasters cost more than $5 billion so far in 2017, which establishes a record. The bulk of the damage in terms of cost was due to the outbreak of severe storms. This year has also been unusual in how far north severe weather, including tornadoes, has occurred for so early in the year. For instance, Massachusetts was hit by two EF1 tornadoes on February 25th. This is the first occurrence of tornadoes for the month of February in the historical records of that state. In Minnesota, they experienced a similar rare early season event when severe thunderstorms spawned three EF1 tornadoes on March 6. Those were the earliest known twisters for a calendar year in the state by nearly two weeks. If you thought that our climate, the atmosphere, and the changes taking place both on the surface of the earth and below the surface couldn't get any worse, then maybe you should pay close attention to this report. A project initiated by two Harvard scientists and funded in part by Microsoft founder Bill Gates and the Hewlett and Alfred P. Sloan Foundations and through government grants are sending aerosol injections into the Earth's stratosphere in the world's biggest chemtrail experiment to date. The purpose of the project is to solve the problem of a warming planet by simulating the atmospheric cooling effects of a volcanic eruption in a desperate attempt to halt climate change. The basic idea is that spraying certain types of particles into the stratosphere could help reflect more heat back into space. But what is less certain is how this geoengineering technique could control worldwide temperatures and what the environmental side effects may be. Reducing incoming solar radiation affects both the weather and the hydrological cycle. It promotes drought and it destabilizes the environment. Natural alterations to the Earth's radiation balance can be devastating even if for a short while. A 1991 Mount Pinatubo eruption lowered global temperatures by half a degree, while the Mount Tambora eruption in 1815 triggered Europe's year without a summer, bringing crop failure, famine, and disease to the world. These are but a few of the many events that are happening across our planet in the past few weeks. Is it any wonder that so many of us are on pins and needles when we see what is taking place around us? There is a delicate balance between nature and man, but that balance weighs heavily on forces of play here on Earth, within our solar system, and with the sun. For every action that occurs, there will be a reaction. We are witnessing a series of disturbing events, the consequences of which will severely affect every living thing on the planet. It has been said that 
Planet X is the harbinger of doom, a ball of redemption that has been cast out from the vast darkness of the universe, where its presence in the heavens will be a final warning sign to humanity. Something quite serious is happening to our planet. We are feeling the effects of a powerful force. The changes are taking place here on earth and in the sky, regardless of what we believe to be true. No one knows the time. It is not for us to know, only for us to prepare as best we know how and through whatever means possible. So here is what I am doing and I hope that you will do the same. Make the most of each day. This is something you should do regardless of your circumstances. Help those who need it the most. There are many searching for comfort and peace of mind in these troubled times. And show some kindness and generosity to others. Since all of us need some sort of reassurance that things will be all right, even in moments of despair. I realize the clock is ticking, time is moving quickly, and there is so much I would like to tell you and present to you, but I am hopeful that you benefit from these videos in some small way. I know that your comments of support are very much appreciated by myself and those who have assisted in these presentations. So stay safe, keep an open mind, remain vigilant to your surroundings, and keep looking. To some time ago that world leaders were preparing for something catastrophic when it was discovered that they were preparing top secret bunkers for the political and wealthy elite. The disaster that governments are and have been preparing for is one that will have dire consequences for civilization. So let's examine the facts that are known at this time and see if we can connect the dots. Let's begin with a video clip from 2015 which may explain why trillions of taxpayers' money has mysteriously disappeared. This shelter located in Europe is just one of many shelters that have been built for the world's elite.
So if you're afraid of the end of the world and have a few millions of dollars to spend, you're welcome to secure a place at the Europa One Shelter. If not, at least now you know such a place exists. Something strange is happening right here in the United States. There appears to be room for 10,000 of the world's elite to step into an underground world beneath Denver. Huge drills have dug underground bases below the Rocky Mountains, which are connected to Washington by high-speed trains. Giant nuclear-powered drills, similar to those used by the British and French to carve out the English Channel, are now glazing the walls of underground facilities, fortifying them for future use. The reason for such a complex system of bunkers has nothing to do with a nuclear World War III, but rather a natural disaster the likes of which this present world has never witnessed. This event is apocalyptic and involves the arrival of Planet X. The magnetic field created by the passage of this planetary system could cause a massive debris field to rain down on the world. Something epic is about to occur that the elite have been preparing for since the discovery of this system back in the early 1980s by the IRIS telescope. First, its discovery was announced to the world via two major newspapers, and then it was suddenly suppressed and no government agency was allowed to discuss it again. So what can most people do to prepare who aren't among the privileged few? Will they wait until the government makes a nationwide announcement and then look up into the sky to see what's coming? Will they wait until a series of nuclear weapons are detonated or a viral pandemic becomes widespread before finally becoming motivated to prepare? But by that time, it will have been too late to make any preparations. There have been unusual reports of strange sounds and vibrations coming from underground in the past 20 years. Almost continuously reports have come from ordinary people in many townships across the heartland of the United States and in southern Canada. Listen as residents of Windsor, Ontario talk about these unusual sounds that are ongoing. that we began hearing and feeling a very loud vibration outside. Uh, we really didn't acknowledge it at the time, but a year and a half later, the vibrations and the rumblings have become so intense that it's disrupted our daily lives. Uh, the rumblings begin almost immediately in the morning and proceed throughout the evening getting stronger in intensity. I live in South Windsor. Uh, we started hearing some of the rumbling noises in about February. And then in time, I started noticing greater frequency and patterns, particularly in the evenings, um, where this noise was occurring. And uh, it really culminated in an incident uh, at the end of May, May 31st. I was watching a, a basketball game, and it was incredibly loud. The vibrations, you could feel them coming through the house and, uh, and through the windows. We went out to see what it was, and it was just so intense. And as a result of that, I, uh, I got involved. I contacted the ministry, ministry of the Environment to find out what the issue was and to find out what they knew about it and uh, made some uh, further efforts to, uh, to get the federal government to provide some monitoring equipment. Uh, back in uh, March, I started to receive uh, one or two phone calls about some consistent rumblings and vibrations in, in neighborhoods in and around uh, uh, the ward. 
uh, specifically around Rankin and Totten and other areas like that. Um, at the time, I probably would have thought it was just some sort of isolated construction project in the area, but it then escalated uh, quite significant over the next uh, month and a half, two months or so. I started hearing it from all over the uh, western part of, uh, of my ward, uh, Ward 10, and then started to hear a lot more from residents uh, all over the southern part of, uh, of Windsor and uh, west parts of Windsor and LaSalle. Uh, so I then, at this point, uh, decided to get together with some residents, visit their homes, and, uh, and start pinpointing on a map exactly where these uh, these vibration rumblings uh, noises are coming from. Uh, last night, around uh, between 1 a.m. and 3 a.m., I visited those homes, visited some areas, and uh, it was a real um, strong uh, vibration that had come from the ground. It was a synthetic noise. It's really there. Um, you personally experienced it. I personally experienced it. I, I sat in, and the person in the house at the time shut off the air conditioner, shut off the furnace, shut off the water uh, main, shut off the electricity, and turned everything off and around the house. And uh, if you put your palm to uh, the hardwood floor, you could feel uh, some sort of synthetic, uh, synthesi synthesizing a uh, uh, little bit of a noise vibration. It's very weak. Uh, it grows a little bit, but it's consistent, and it goes back down. Uh, it's real. It's there. It's present. And I think that this issue needs to be taken. Uh, much more serious. There needs to be an investigation. It's out there. Uh, it's getting uh, complaints are rising, and uh, it started with one or two people, and now it's gotten to hundreds and hundreds of people across the southern west part of the city and uh, uh, even bordering into the south. So, as you can see, there are difficult questions that we must ask ourselves. Did you know that there is a joint venture of the National Security Agency, the Department of Defense, the Department of Homeland Security, and the Center for Disease Control, which has been created to facilitate an expansive tunnel system throughout the South to protect us from nuclear, biological, and chemical attack? These tunnels will also serve as conduits for national defense to move troops, supplies, and armor between strategic locations. Here is something that is worth noting. The tunnels are already in place. They are reportedly using a six-month time frame to clear out the facilities and reconfigure them for supply depots, communication hubs, and pre-processing centers. Now you know there are going to be some who are going to think this is all crazy nonsense. These are the same people who spend little or no time researching this. The same is true with respect to Planet X. It's easy to say it doesn't exist if you haven't done any serious research. My suggestion to those who know or feel that something just isn't right is to use the internet while it is still available for your use. There are many books and publications that can teach you how to construct fortified bunkers and at the same time show you how to prepare food and water supplies in a natural manner. Some of you will say, well, what is the use of preparing? We're all going to die anyway. That is an easy out for those who are not prepared and have no intention of doing so. But for the rest of us, being prepared to face any potential disaster is of the utmost importance, as it could happen at any given time. Every disaster, regardless of the impact, teaches us a lesson, that it is better to have a clear understanding of what to do when disaster strikes than to be wandering in the wilderness with no concept of how to survive. The construction of underground facilities may very well be related to what is happening in the sky. Many of you are convinced that another sun is appearing. There are many photos and videos that are providing ample evidence to support this. Regardless, there are some in the community who do not want to talk about this and are doing everything which is humanly possible to keep you from discovering the truth. One of the ways in which they have tried to hide this is through the continuous use of chemtrails. If you spend any time in the outdoors, especially in areas that are heavily populated, 
you will see the trails zigzag across the horizon prior to sunset or just before sunrise. The spraying of our atmosphere will continue as long as the vast majority of us have our faces glued to our cell phones or a television screen, or for as long as the mainstream media keeps it under wraps. It doesn't matter what we call this thing, a second sun, a brown dwarf star, Nibiru, the red or blue kachina of Hopi prophecy, it just doesn't matter because it is there. They are attempting to keep it hiding from view. I know this because I have seen it firsthand. They spray chemtrails early in the morning and again in the evening. Not every day, but when it is needed. They even make an X to mark the spot. Whatever has entered into our existence its presence is being felt across the solar system. What it will do and when it will make its presence known is a matter of interpretation, but it must be something extraordinary, otherwise the people in authority wouldn't be going to such extremes to keep its presence hidden for so many years. So my friends, keep your eyes open and focused on your surroundings. Here is something very interesting that I just recently discovered about Nibiru, which is known in ancient literature as the planet of the crossing. It is now apparent that Nibiru is no longer a theory. Scientists and educators across the globe have come to the conclusion that its existence is real, and that it poses concerns for the inhabitants of planet Earth. This may seem whimsical to some of you, especially those who cannot grasp the concept of a Planet X, but for a number of years now there have been a series of subtle hints given to the public, warning them of what is to come. This has been accomplished through means of Hollywood productions, commercials, and television documentaries. Now it seems even cartoons are providing an outlet for informing people. Most of you may be familiar with the cartoon series called Scooby-Doo. It's been in syndication for a long time. Well, as you will see in this video clip, the producers of this animated show have something to tell the world. Take a look. Something's been bugging me about our little underwater escapade. There's a lot about that adventure I wish we could forget. Amen to that. But the weirdest part of all was what the late Abigail Gluck whispered. Like I'll say, a crazy mummified corpse whispering Nibiru is creepy times ten. It gets creepier. Mm -hmm. I googled it and found a lot. Namely this. Nibiru is a planet listed in the writings of Zachariah Sitchin, particularly his book The Twelfth Planet. According to Sitchin's interpretation of Babylonian religious texts, a giant planet called Nibiru passes by Earth every 3,600 years and allows its sentient inhabitants to interact with humanity. These beings, which Sitchin identified with the Anunnaki of Sumerian myth, would become humanity's first gods. My favorite internet encyclopedia says there's supposed to be a collision. The Nibiru collision is a disastrous encounter between the Earth and a large planetary object. <laughs> Believers in this doomsday event usually refer to this object as Planet X, or Nibiru. Doomsday event? Regardless of the intent of the producers, there is certainly a story to convey here. Although this is a cartoon watched by millions of children around the world, there appears to be a serious overtone incorporated into the animated episode. Down in Antarctica, there is another story waiting to be told. All of a sudden, government officials, military brass, even predominant members of the world's religions are going there. But why? What is so important that requires their immediate attention and concern? There is even some speculation that people are being evacuated. If this should prove to be true, 
then something very disconcerting is taking place on the frozen continent. But there is one thing that is a certainty that has significant implications. The crack in the Larsen Sea ice shelf continues to grow and expand. There are now only 10 miles of ice that separate this from the open sea. This is not the first time that Antarctica has been on the verge of losing a significant portion of its ice sheet. But the Larsen Sea ice collapse will most likely change the landscape of the continent. It will allow the glacial ice to enter the ocean faster and accelerate the pace of sea level rise. This is because Larsen Sea is 10 times bigger than its nearby ice shelf and therefore will have a more devastating impact on Earth's ecological balance. As you know, Skywatch Media has been posting a series of images and video clips captured by Skywatchers from all over the world. They are posted on our Facebook page, which was created prim primarily for this purpose. Keeping you up to date is very important, so what I would like to do in my upcoming presentations is to include a few images and videos that were posted on our Facebook page that you may not have had an opportunity to view yet. So let's take a look at what is happening at this time.
The photo captures from Kent, England are absolutely amazing in that the individual who was photographing the sun over Magat Beach had no idea what he had captured. And he sent these images to a friend who is an astronomical observer for his analysis, and they were then published to our Facebook page for review. There is something that is important to emphasize with these captures that disputes anything that a debunker may throw at you regarding their authenticity. And that has to do with the criteria for labeling an object as a lens flare. And this is what you need to know. Lens flares do not reflect as an object in a water landscape. As you can see in this image, the second sun, Nemesis, whatever this may be, is clearly reflecting in the water. A lens flare cannot do that because it does not exist. It is an illusion of the camera lens. Furthermore, this was photographed in the outdoors, so there were no obstructions that could cause a double reflection of the sun. Now, if we go to the FAA webcam capture uh, from Alaska of the red planet, or the red dwarf star as it may actually be, not only is this object rotating, suggesting that, is it, that it is in fact in orbit around our sun, but incredibly the object is captured behind the cloud formations and is even visible behind an aerospray trail. Now, have you ever heard of a lens flare that can do that? I haven't. It just isn't physically possible for that to occur. 